En in de komende 25 minuten zullen we gaan genieten van de man die bij Guns N' Roses het nodig heeft laten zien. Maar nu ook zijn eigen band heeft. Um, het weer is hier de hele dag uh, tot verbazing van iedereen eigenlijk redelijk goed geweest. Want de kans op regen was 60%. We hadden al allemaal uh, dik rekening gehouden met een flinke plensbui. Viel reuze mee, hier en daar heeft een beetje gemiezerd. En de aanvankelijke opkomst, gepland van 45.000 man, is ook behoorlijk meegevallen. We zitten dik over de 50.000 bezoekers. Ik zei het al, het optreden van Slash vond vanmiddag plaats op het uh, Noordpodium. En daar gaan we nu naar kijken. Maar voordat we dat optreden gaan zien, eerst het gesprek dat Bram van Splunteren had met ex Guns N' Roses man Slash. Hi Slash, welcome to Pink Pop. Hi, okay, we're on, yes. <laughs> we're on. What, what were you saying about the little Pink Pop doll? Oh, she's, she's adorable, except for they should have her. She, her dress hiked up a little bit with little pink panties and uh, one eye winked and you're a cigar. A, <laughs> you're a naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> that would look a little cooler. Yeah. This is a little square, this doll, right? She's a little bit too square. She actually looks satanic, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. can, I, can I ask you a couple questions about your youth and about growing up and when you started becoming a musician? Um, yeah, you can. Because I understand your parents, they, they were uh, partly involved in music and showbiz, right? Right, well, um, like my mom, this is actually old news. My mom was a clothes designer for a lot of uh, rock rock bands in the 70s. And right. uh, my dad did album covers. As far as the band, she did Bowie, Lennon, Ringo, the Pointer Sisters. Um, fuck, there's a whole bunch of them. And then, uh, so I was just always around that kind of environment. Those yeah. people actually came to your house, or how did yeah, they go? Yeah, no, we, we either, we'd hang out at their house. There was, uh, a whole street that we lived on, which is called Wonderland Avenue, which everybody knows that street. And it was like, uh, uh, you know, us, David Geffen, uh, Joni Mitchell, somebody who probably nobody remembers, David Blue. David Blue, uh-huh. Yeah, my dad used to do his album cover. So we all lived in the same neighborhood. Yeah. But that was like a like very late 60s, early 70s kind of vibe that is not really existent anymore. But that's where I come from. That, that was sorry. Hollywood? That was in I, Hollywood? I'm an offshoot of the baby boomers, I suppose. <laughs> you know? Almost. But this was in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wasn't when I was in England when I was born. Uh, I was raised around my uncles and stuff, who all listened to the Moody Blues and the Stones, and so it's always been sort of a music thing happening. So was there a particular event that happened at some point that made you decide you wanted to be uh, yeah. a guitar player yourself? Well, okay, always having liked music and having been able to differentiate which music I liked and which music I didn't like at a very young age. I didn't have any expectations of being a musician, but I was very familiar with music. So when I got turned on to guitar, it was just uh, around the time that I was about 13, 14 years old when I discovered it. And then I actually started to play when I was 15. Um, I, Steven Adler, the old Guns N' Roses drummer, turned me on to guitar playing. Is that so? Yeah, he couldn't play guitar, but there was something about it that he had one at home. And when his grandmother would go to work in the morning, we'd ditch school and hang out at, at his grandmother's house. And he had a little amp and a, and a guitar, and he put like a Kiss record on or an Aerosmith record on or something. And then he'd just bang away on the, He couldn't play it, he'd just bang on it. And mm -hmm. I got a fucking hard on from it, so. No, you did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I started playing guitar. <laughs> And did, did, did you, uh, no, do you remember any of those uh, people uh, in particular that came to your house? Was there a meeting that you remember in, in particular? Well, David, David went out with my mom for a year. David who? Bowie. Uh -huh. Went out with my mom for like, a, pretty close to a year. So he was always around. Um, and of course, Angie was always around. I don't know how that worked. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there was Minnie Riperton. Um, uh, Carly Simon, uh, yeah. But but like David Bowie, that wasn't the type of music that you were into, or was it? Um, no, I, I like everything. I mean, if as long as it's genuine, I like a huge uh, span of music. The kind of music that I actually do happens just to be my particular kind of my own personal trip, you know. But there's a lot of stuff that I listen to. I don't necessarily sound like it, but uh, I, there's a lot of things I listen to that you, people wouldn't expect me to listen to. And, and now you you have uh, become a guitar you know rock guitar player and is this like a dream come true in a way is it like what you had imagined or um, I didn't imagine anything see I never had any convoluted fantasy thing going on I just like playing so if for me it's it's 
a lot of fun, it's really exciting, and it's a lot of hard work and so on. So I don't look at it from sort of like uh, the average fan's point of view where it looks so glamorous, because I know it isn't. Um, I just like to get it together, get up and play, and you know, do it as much as possible. Why is it that you don't let us uh, see your eyes, by the way? Because I didn't, I didn't sleep last night. What did you do then, <laughs> instead of sleeping? I'm kidding. <laughs> I slept on the bus. <laughs> you know? yeah. So then you haven't, haven't answered no, my question. I always keep my hair in my face. You know? Why is that? People want to see I your eyes. Know. I know. <laughs> It's a big deal. Beautiful uh, jewelry, by the way, I must say. You know? Well, that's um, well. You have to to give all the credit to the kids at the shows that give me this stuff. I don't go and buy it. Is that so? Yeah. It just come I, up. To I you? don't have anything on right now that I bought. <laughs> oh, you're kidding! So people just come up to you and give you this beautiful. You know, we hang out a lot, and sometimes you know we exchange T-shirts. Like I got this from one of the Ugly Kid Joe guys yesterday, so he provided me with a shirt to wear today. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, sometimes when we're hanging out in the crowd or whatever, um, you know, I'll run into somebody and I'll go, "Oh, that's cool," and they'll give it to me, uh, and I'll give them something, and we just sort of. But you can, like a, you can still go into a crowd and not well, be not, like not bothered. Like, I can't walk around in there. But no, I mean, like, you know, on the side of the stage and stuff, some of the people that have passes that are hanging out mm -hmm. or by the bus or whatever. Does that sound strange to you? No. <laughs> but uh, I could see you buying this, but you, you didn't. Okay, that's okay. No, I, I, I hate shopping. <laughs> ah, really? You just sit home and play guitar, right? That's what you do, do like to do best. More or less, something yeah. to that extent. I usually spend most of my time at home figuring out a way how to get the fuck out of there so I can be on the road, which is why, how I ended up here. Yeah. yeah. So just a question that everybody wants to know the answer about is, when did you last talk to Axl Rose? Um, probably about six months ago. Is that so? Uh -huh. We go through these periods where I do my thing and he does his, and then eventually we come together, and that's when another Guns N' Roses record gets done. Yeah. When this tour ends, which is it's a six-month tour, um, I'll go in, in, in August. I'll go home and, and basically we'll regroup, so to speak, and then we'll you know then Guns will probably spend a little bit of time in the studio and then be on the road for a while. We'll be like family for a long time and then when the tour when the tour ends I'm probably just gonna go back and make another snake pit record and do another small club tour hmm. and we'll just sort of play it that way right but of course nothing is ever that predictable but that's that's the basic plan yeah and you didn't feel the need to call him and say how are you doing man and how's it going um at this point I'm touring so like I have a hard enough time calling my wife oh is that so <laughs> yeah where is she then she's home in LA hmm. yeah but you do call her every now and then? I, well, I call her when I get to a phone. We're on the bus most of the time, mm. so... Yeah, okay. So how's it going with this, uh, with your new band? It's You've awesome. Been... Yeah? Well, you know, I mean, I have a certain passion for, like, the, uh, very spontaneous, go-for-what-you-know rock and roll approach, which is what this whole band is based on. I mean, we haven't been together that long or anything like that, but we all get on very well. Mm -hmm. And so we throw a set together, like we just threw one together for tonight, uh -huh. and we just go out there and try our best, you know? And it's something about that that immediacy that is the way, where I come from, that I sort of, you know, Guns is already established, you know? If we go out on stage with Guns N' Roses, they're gonna expect to hear certain songs, this and that. Nobody knows any of the Snake Pit stuff. You know, maybe Beggars and Hangers on, a couple of songs, but uh, basically we're just going out there on our own merit. You know, and that's all we have to go on. I sort of like the challenge, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Well, thanks a lot, and good luck with your show. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right, dude, see ya. Nice. All right. So is that what's going on?
Thank you. How are you guys fucking doing today? See a lot of fashion happening out there, especially the chick with the top hat right there. Alright, this is the pit. You're in it. So uh, have a good fucking time. Anyway, this is a dark little song called Lure.
Eentje. Dat was het optreden van Slashes Snake Pit vanaf het Noordpodium waar vandaag verder werd opgetreden door Hootie en de Blowfish, het Nova, Seven Day Diary, Danto.